Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how we can plot a set of XY coordinates or in other words, a bunch of different uh, latitude and longitude values on a map using Microsoft Excel. And the example dataset that I'm going to use for this purpose is this dataset which I downloaded from Kaggle, which shows the information about the airports in the United States. So as you can see, one single row is basically representing one airport at a particular location. Over here, you can see the IATA code, the name of the airport, the city, the state, the country, and the latitude and longitude coordinates. So in total in this list, I have 341 locations of different airports in the United States. And what we're trying to do is we're going to basically plot this information on a map. And the cool thing is that I'm not going to use any external software packages like QGIS, ArcGIS, or even Google Earth Pro. If you guys can recall, I have done tutorials in the past showing you guys how you can import this uh, latitude and longitude information onto a map using those kind of uh, different dedicated software packages. But this tutorial is en entirely focused on how to do the same thing, but using Microsoft Excel. And this is how your final product is going to look. The distribution of airports across the United States represented as one single dot on the map. So without further ado, let's jump in and we'll see how we can do this. So just for convenience, I'm going to get started by converting this into a standard Excel table. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the entire data table and under home tab, you can find this button format as a table. And if you expand this and select maybe one of these choices that you have access to, I'm going to go with this light style and click OK. And that's going to convert my data set into a table. I'm just going to highlight this and make sure that I remove this filter button because I won't be filtering anything for this particular tutorial. And after that, again, I'm going to select the entire thing and I'm going to go to insert. And over here, there's one option called 3D maps. So I'm going to expand this and under this, you can find open 3D maps. And what's going to happen is this kind of a secondary window will get opened up. And over here, you can see an interactive globe and you can navigate around simply by using these buttons. For example, you can zoom in on a particular area by clicking and holding this button. And similarly, you can zoom out as well. And over here, we also have four buttons to basically navigate around just like this. But if you're using a mouse with a scroll wheel, that's basically going to be the easiest way to navigate around. For example, you, you can just give it a twist like this and you can rotate the entire globe. And similarly, you can use the scroll wheel to zoom in and zoom out kind of like how you would navigate around in Google Earth Pro. And uh, in case if you're curious which access provider is being used over here by Microsoft Excel, it's basically Bing Map. So the map that you're seeing over here is basically powered by Bing Maps, as you can see from the logo right over here. And in this tutorial, we are not going to dive much deeper into all of these different uh, options that you see over here, but we are only going to discuss the functionalities that are actually going to be relevant which is basically plotting the information on the map. And I'm going to get started by first discussing this layers panel because this is going to be one of the most important things of the entire process. If you understand this, then the entire process of plotting stuff on this map is going to be quite simple. Now, if I resize this just a bit so that you guys can still see my original data set, over here you can see that we have this IATA code, the name of the airport, the city, state, country, and latitude and longitude. And out of this information, what's going to be more crucial when it comes to accurately plotting a point on a map, is actually going to be none of those information, but this latitude and longitude information. So as long as we find a way to provide the corresponding latitude and longitude information, it's actually going to recognize the geographical location which corresponds to that particular point, and it's going to plot that on the map. So if I go over here and click on add field, you can see that these field names basically refer to these column headings. And the very first field that I'm going to enter is going to be my longitude value or basically the X value. And as you can see, what got added over here is basically this LON heading. But for Microsoft Excel to recognize or for Bing Maps to basically recognize what this long value actually means, you have to map that to the correct item which is displayed on this list. Now, in this case, the longitude value basically refers to the X coordinate. So it would be correct to either choose X 
and then do the same process for latitude and select Y. That's actually going to work perfectly fine. But to make things even simpler for us, you can see that there is already a predefined latitude and longitude option over here. So what I have to do is simply not really bother about this XY coordinate in this particular case, but to map this lon to longitude. And similarly, I'm going to add another field. And this time it's going to be my latitude, latitude values. And I'm going to map that to this latitude option over here. And as soon as I do that, you can see that the points actually got plotted exactly at the right place in terms of its uh, geographical location. So I'm going to expand this just a bit. And over here you can see quite clearly the distribution of the airports in the form of uh, point locations over here across the United States. So you can see that it was actually just as quick as that. And the only thing that you had to grasp was how to basically map the data in your particular table to the corresponding latitude and longitude values. And in no time, we managed to visually see the set of points on a map like this. And technically, this is going to be the end of the tutorial, but I'm going to take a couple more minutes to actually discuss with you guys a few styling options that you might find interesting. For example, over here by default, even though it's a point location, you can see that it's still a rectangle over here. So just in case if you're wondering how exactly we can convert this into an actual point right over here, you can see that we have different types of charts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click over here and visualize this as a bubble. And in case if you find the size of the bubbles to be a bit too much, you can go over here and expand this layer options. And from here, of course, you can change the size of the bubbles. You can see that when I slide this to the left side, the size of the bubbles decrease. And if I, and it makes the bubbles larger, if I were to slide this to the right side. So I think a good point would be somewhere around 60, around 62%, I reckon. And of course, you can change the opacity from here. You can make changes to the color as well. If you'd like to go with a different color like red, can just click over here and you can see all the points actually gets colored according to that. And one more cool thing is that this map is actually kind of an interactive map. For example, if you just hover your mouse pointer over here, you can see that some information is actually getting displayed. And with the default setting, you can see that what's going to get displayed is basically just the latitude and the longitude value, which uh, still might serve some purpose, but I would much rather be happy if we were able to display some useful information like maybe the name of the airport, or the name of the city or the state where that airport is located at. So that kind of information can be actually customized if you go over here to this data card and if you click customize. And by default you can see that the only two fields which have been added over here are these latitude and longitude fields. So I'm going to click over here and add another field which is the name of the airport and maybe the name of the state as well. And now if you click OK and if I hover my mouse pointer over to one of those points, you can see that right now it's basically displaying all of those information exactly as I intended to have. So over here you can see that the name of the airport is Garden City Regional, the state is Kansas. And if I hover my mouse pointer all the way to a different airport, you can see that this is the Fairbanks International Airport in Alaska. So it's pretty much doing what we expected it to do. And one more cool thing that you can do is you can actually use this category option to your advantage in certain cases. For example, right now you can see that the color representation is actually quite uniform. That means all the points have been colored in red color. But what if you were to color these points with some sort of a proper basis? What if we could assign one specific color for all the airports that are located at one particular state and differentiate the color of the dot based on the state? That would be quite a nice arrangement, isn't it? So you can do stuff like that simply by going over here and clicking on category and we can add a field like this. And I'm going to do my categorization based on the name of the state. Now, if you were dealing with a data set which has information of multiple countries in it, you could even use a field like country to basically color all the stuff that are located within the geographic boundaries of that country in one single color and let it automatically change the color based on each individual country. But in this case, since we're only dealing with the data of the United States, I'm going to differentiate them based on the state where it's located at. So I'm going to click over here. And as soon as I do that, you can see that the default arrangement is actually not really quite uh, presentable. So I'm going to expand this layer options and I'm definitely going to reduce the size so that the data set will become more meaningful. 
and automatically you will get this legend where it shows what each of these different colors actually refer to. In this case, you can see the corresponding state code. I'm going to get rid of this for the time being. And if I zoom into this area right over here, you can see that these four purple dots are basically airports which are located in South Dakota. Whereas if you go over here, you can see that these eight points are actually airports located within the state of uh, North Dakota. So the color differentiation might not be that apparent from one state to another. For example, over here, you can see that these two are actually located in two different states, even though they happen to have been colored in blue. However, slight difference is still actually noticeable when it comes to the color that has been assigned. But I guess you guys get the basic idea. Now you can even tilt this map like this by clicking over here on this tilt down button. And if you were to increase the thickness, you can see that it's basically extruding the corresponding point upwards. But if you ask my preference, I would actually rather keep this at zero and let it display as a point on the ground rather than having any extrusion outwards. So guys, that brings us to the end of this tutorial. This is pretty much what I wanted to discuss with you guys. But this uh, 3D maps functionality of Microsoft Excel is actually a very powerful tool. And you can do much more than what I have just shown you guys uh, in this tutorial. And that's exactly what we are going to do in the next tutorial. We are going to take a bit of a deep dive into this particular 3D maps tool of Microsoft Excel. And we are going to go over all of these different options and we'll see how we can make use of these functionalities to our advantage to make our life much easier when working with geographic data sets. And it's actually quite comforting to know that you don't necessarily have to have a dedicated GIS software package to work with maps. And you might be amazed to learn what Microsoft Excel itself can do when it comes to working with the geographical data sets. So that's a wrap guys. Thanks a lot for watching. If you do have any questions, add a comment down below and stay tuned for the next tutorial. And until then, take care.